which includes um, Thailand, Singapore, Indonesia, and of course, Vietnam. So as mentioned, today we will have a total of four speakers who will also share with you about what is it like, you know, working for Robert Waters and the roles and responsibility of working in an international recruitment firm. All right, so moving on, um, you know, to introduce the speakers, first up, we will have um, our country manager, Adrian, and then we will have you know, senior consultant from the digital team, Emmanuel, Lim, senior consultant from the sales and marketing team, and we have me, consultant from the tech and transformation team. So on the next slide for today's agenda, we will give you an overview of Robert Waters' business globally, and then we will dig dive into a look at our Vietnam business. Thereafter, you will then hear from our consultants on their journey with Robert Waters, as well as their impact and passion towards their role as a recruitment consultant. So at the end, we will also allocate some time for questions and answers. And now, without further ado, I will hand over to Adrian to give us an overview of the Robert Waters business. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is um, excited to hear some good stories. So we, we, with the team, we will try to make it relatively storytelling based. Uh, we have obviously a couple of slides with some information to for you to, to understand um, what type of business we're running. Um, but I will start um, with these two, with this first slide and those two statements to potentially start putting a bit of perspective in my background and in my in my story. So my name is Adrian. As um, Angeline and V has mentioned, I've been in Vietnam for nine and a half years. I arrived in Vietnam in uh, August 2012 as a fresh graduate. Actually, I was not even graduated yet because I was still finishing my master's degree in, um, in France. Um, and I finalized my degree when I started actually in, in Robert Walters in 2013. Um, I'm in the company for nine years and I'm a country manager for five years. So as you can see, the development has been relatively fast and I will use this slide that everyone can take a bit of time to read to be able to put things in perspective about what does that mean to us and I will use my my background and my story. So in 2012, I were looking for an internship and I studied in Bordeaux in the southwest of France in a business school. And I was finalizing my master's degree and it was um, almost a mandatory uh, request to go abroad uh, and to do an internship abroad to be able to graduate. So with my girlfriend, who's now my wife for almost two years, we decided to look for a country where we can travel, where we can learn a new culture, where we can get a job, uh, where we can grow professionally and personally. And Vietnam came into the picture relatively quickly. And in August 2012, we arrived in Vietnam. We had one way flight tickets, uh, was a bit of backpacker at the time, still is a little bit. Uh, I was having one backpack. That's it. Um, of course, my girlfriend was in the same flight and uh, we arrived in, a, in an apartment to someone that we've never met and actually find out that that person came from the exact same hometown that I came from in France. So coincidence, but everything was very welcoming, of course. Um, but you can imagine potentially someone who's a bit of a com from countryside, a small city in France, landing in Vietnam with all of those motorbikes, all of those sounds, not really knowing what's going to happen. Uh, and having only one way flight ticket was a little bit scary at first. Um, I joined an internship for a young and relatively recent Japanese recruitment um, agency. So something that I knew was that I wanted to do recruitment. It was not a coincidence. I always wanted to do it. Um, because even my internship in Master One was in recruitment as well. So I was really aiming for this. Um, and my girlfriend and I actually managed to both secure the housing in the same place, of course, both secured an internship in the same city, obviously in the same country, and actually walking distance um, because we were our respective internship was, my was on Dien Bien Phu um, and my girlfriend was on McDinchy in uh, Ho Chi Minh, so we can even see each other uh, for lunch. So everything was very well aligned. Um, actually, we potentially think that we had 
we have a lucky star uh, looking uh, being on the top of us to make everything working relatively well. And then my internship started with this Japanese agency and I was uh, not having a smartphone at the time. I was uh, doing business development for French um, Lean Smite because I had a smartphone only five years ago. Um, I, I had only uh, my normal Nokia phone um, and I was um, doing business development on my Honda Wave uh, to the French uh, community in uh, in Ho Chi Minh and I was basically calling French people I have been working for different businesses and I was just going with the flow I was going on Google map I was making a screenshot of my itinerary to go to the different offices and then I didn't really I got lost a lot of time but obviously this is what helped me to know this, the city relatively well but it was very hands-on uh, as you can imagine then after this, we fell in love of Vietnam with my with my girlfriend and we really wanted to stay in the country. Um, and this is why I also applied to Robert Walters, who was in a slightly more bigger name, of course, at the time and having a network of over 30 offices in um, around the world. And it was an opportunity for me as a foreigner to get into an international standard organization where I can potentially maybe one day relocate. And that was maybe not necessarily the plan at the time, but uh, was maybe give me an exit way potentially on the on the long run. I started as a consultant, as everyone here except me, but me will explain why. But Lynn, uh, Emmanuel, and myself, and that's the case of uh, all of our management team today um, in Vietnam anyway. And I made my way up, and I started to be a senior consultant after about a year and a half. Then I was a manager after two years, and ultimately then I became a country manager after um, after four years and I'm now in a role for five years as I've mentioned. So these stories are trying to highlight a little bit something that you all are going to face is what to do, when to do it, should I take a risk, should I try? Um, and I think it's you need to be very much in line with what drives you, what are your passions in life and what was driving me at the time was discovering the world uh, being with my loved one um, and having going into a country where I can grow and I can find an organization that can help me to potentially learn new things, secure the salary and, and potentially get a couple of promotions on the way. So you have to be, I think, we have to be risk takers uh, as fresh graduates. I think we have to be bold as well, but we also need to have a roadmap. We need to know why we do what we do. And in every decision I've made on the last 10 years, there was a, there was rational behind it, uh, even though I was, follow my in, I was following my instincts and I'm still doing the same, uh, even after 10 years. This is a big part of my decision. Most of the time is also uh, trying to listen to my inner drive for me to try to understand um, what was my initial reaction when it comes to making a decision. Um, but it's important to think about long term and there are some of the guys are going to highlight this into the uh, into their presentation because we are and you because we were fresh graduate because you are going to be fresh graduate or you just recently graduated or you will very very soon it's important to think about what you want to do in 2025 what you want to do in 2030 because that gives you a direction whether that plan will be applied or not it doesn't really matter, honestly, but I think that gives you a storyboard. And I think whenever you meet employers, whenever you meet potential friends, it's important to have a storyline that makes sense because it's important that you guys are driving your development and you are driving your career development. And to do this, you need to be able to think about what you really want to do. And Vietnam is an exciting country where you are going to have a lot of opportunities. Uh, you're going to have a lot of options in the market and you won't be able to always live in this uh, FOMO effect um, for your for the entire life and you'll be able to make decisions. Um, and you need to embrace those decisions without thinking about what you could have missed, but to concentrate on the opportunities you have at the moment. So this is why we have this Southeast Asia vision and this is why we have also this power of statements, powering people and organization to fulfill their unique potential. I am the result of this uh, because without having that um, 
Robert Walter's statement as well. I don't think I would have been the chance to potentially be uh, a 30 years old country manager, which made me at the time, and I'm potentially still is, the youngest country manager in the group globally. Um, and I think age doesn't matter. I think it's more about what do you have to bring to the table and you need to be confident in your value whenever you are meeting employers. So we, we can move on. So Robert Walters is an English-British uh, recruitment company headquartered in uh, London and operating globally since 1985. Um, we are operating in 30 more than 30 countries globally we have more than 3000 employees globally as well and something that i want to highlight here is the fact that 90 percent of our management team join as a senior con or a senior consultant globally and i think it's important to remember this because that highlights the importance even in a consultancy firm to stick to the plan and to start at the bottom and to seek for internal promotion because this is how you build up credibility and knowledge. Yeah, next one. So globally, this is our presence um, and we've been in Asia Pacific and in Southeast Asia for over 20 years. And I believe this is the next information, but we started to come in, uh, in APAC in Hong Kong and then Singapore came very early on. It was about 23 years ago. So Robert Walters actually in Asia Pacific and in Southeast Asia, he's been first mover from a strategic development. And one of our strategic development is internationalization. And we always wanted to be the first one to enter the countries in Asia Pacific. Yeah, next slide. So in Southeast Asia, um, as I've mentioned, so Singapore was the first one, was over 20 years ago. Um, we have been in Vietnam for over 10 years. We are covering six countries, which are um, Singapore at first, Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines, Malaysia, and Vietnam. Our average tenors of years for our leadership team is 10 years in Southeast Asia, in 90% of our management team, as I've mentioned, and it's not an exception in Southeast Asia, were um, consultant or senior consultant. So these are the different countries and offices. So we have two offices in Thailand and we have two offices in Malaysia. So our Vietnam business, so let's, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you can go to the next one, it's fine. So just to focus on Vietnam, we've been here for 11 years. We have over 50 employees. We have about 52 people now, uh, to, be, to be exact. Our management team is exclusively self-grown um, and internally grown. And the average um, work experience of our management team is now six years including myself with uh, nine years with uh, um, yeah. Someone is to nice music. Nice, thank you. Um, and we have our two associate directors has been in the group for close to seven or eight years as well. So obviously we are um, we are trying to build up a very stable environment, which is very, very important for uh, for our organization to grow. 80% of our employees didn't do HR or didn't do recruitment before joining us. Um, and uh, me, uh, Emmanuel and Lynn will be highlighting this, but this is something very specific to Robert Walters and Robert Walters Vietnam. We are recruiting people who usually never did recruitment, but studied business, studied accounting, studied engineering. So we have all of those backgrounds um, who then uh, worked in different industries for on average five or six years and then join us as a recruitment consultant. And Robert Walter's responsibility is then to train you or to train potential consultants to become good recruiters. But with um, background before. So again, back to my initial points in my story at the beginning, you will have different opportunities to grow uh, in your career, but it's important to know why 
you do things and where do you want to go. I think it's very, very important because you'll have plenty of opportunities to, of opportunities to touch different functions or different industries in your in the next 10 years uh, post graduation. So that's about it, I think, for Vietnam. And these are the different functions that we will be covering, uh, meaning that for each function, we are going to have one specific team. Um, and that's the way we are organized in uh, Robert Walters in Vietnam and as well globally. Um, we are focusing on function and the different org charts and not industries, which is something quite different from quite a lot of different other agencies. Yeah, different awards we've been winning on the way. Uh, it's always great to get recognition, to be attract, to be able to attract top talents, as all of you are. Uh, we have over 50 people on the call, and all of you will have plenty of opportunities. And it's important that for us and for me as an employer, I'm making myself as attractive as possible to be able to uh, catch the right talent in the market because obviously everyone is fighting to hire the best ones and we are not an exception to this yeah and that's it for my part and obviously we have a q a session after so if anyone has any questions on my background or anything i've been mentioning here we'll be able to reply after this thank you very much Thank you, Adrian. Maybe um, next on, we'll move on to Emmanuel. Yeah. So, yeah thank you uh, very much for having me, uh, IMIT team. I'm uh, very glad to host uh, this uh, small uh, session. session and to be to be part of this uh, this uh, of this uh, sharing with with, with us. Um, so myself, I'm uh, Emmanuel. I'm from originally from uh, France, and uh, as shared by uh, by Adrian, I don't have a, a background in uh, recruitment. So I I study in the east of France uh, supply chain, and I did a few internship in supply chain in uh, in France, and uh, I also had to uh, study one year overseas. So I decided to to uh, to study in uh, Vietnam, in Hanoi more specifically, and to do a MBA program in uh, in a French Vietnamese University. So it was back in uh, 2017, and I studied in Hanoi for for one year, and I enjoy also my time here. So I decided to uh, to look for a job opportunity. Uh, why Robert Walters were was interesting in my in my profile because I had background in supply chain. And I was open to hear um, to be able to do a transition from supply chain to recruitment. So what we are looking for uh, in, in Robert Walters usually is people who have experience in, in, a, in an industry and who like to recruit for this industry. So in my case, I started to work in Robert Walters to recruit for the supply chain and, and the engineering team. So basically recruiting for the factories uh, around uh, Ho Chi Minh City or Hanoi in uh, Binh Dung Dung Nai, and then and visiting uh, the factories and helping them to recruit uh, uh, factory manager, quality manager, for example. And then uh, after two years and of a good journey in the manufacturing uh, recruitment team, I decided to switch to the uh, digital uh, team and to start to recruit for uh, digital and e-commerce industry for marketing and, and sales uh, uh, function. Um, so, I mean, I'm very glad because when I was working in um, in supply chain in my the beginning of my career, early career, uh, I think is I follow this path because I thought it was a easy way to find a job. It was I think I was good with numbers. I was good with processes. So I think I could be quite performing in this job. So this is why I chose this at the beginning to study this uh, this industry and to follow this career path. And after one or two years in the industry, I realized that it was not really for me. So the message also here for the students is, um, uh, I mean, you will follow a, a career path and a uh, few opportunities at the beginning, but don't worry. If you want to change, it's never too late and uh, better change early than sticking to something you don't like. I think uh, anyway, most of the people nowadays are, are very comfortable to change industry, to change sometimes countries, etc. And I think you need to be adaptable to follow also uh, what the market needs. And nowadays, I think uh, it's more towards uh, IT digital, 
um, but yeah, don't, uh, I mean, if you make a mistake, if, if you don't feel like comfortable in a job or in an industry, uh, feel free to change because you have a long carry uh, in front of you. So uh, it's it's what I did and uh, I'm, I'm very happy now. So don't, I, I will recommend to try uh, when you are uh, when you are student to try how many industry, as many jobs, don't stick to only one to also discover what you like and what you don't like. So it will be easier for you to um, to, to save time uh, for, for later. So this was my uh, my experience. And then I started in uh, recruitment. And then, uh, as I say, first in the manufacturing field. So I, I love recruitment, but maybe my manufacturing was not uh, what I, I, I preferred. So I decided to switch uh, to, uh, to the digital recruitment. And uh, I'm very glad that uh, Robert Walters uh, supported me with, me with this change. So I. I have this long term direction now uh, in this uh, digital field, so I have no concern now to to change uh, any any job or any industry. And uh, so I found finally, I think my uh, my career path for the for the next uh, few years. Um, so this is my uh, personal story, and then uh, maybe we can move to the next slide where I can share with you maybe some a bit tips about uh, uh, how to. Uh, get a new job with no experience and how to write a, a resume to find your your dream job because <clears throat> personally in my uh, during my free time i also uh, hosted before some uh, workshop and um, and some uh, also mentoring session where i help uh, students or professional because in robert Walters we are focusing on uh, manager to director level um, to help them to to write or to uh, find a new job because even though they are people can be professional with long experience, 15, 20 years of experience, but they are not expert in uh, when it comes to uh, look for a new job. So uh, we are there uh, uh, in contact of the market to uh, to be able to uh, to share with uh, our candidates and sometimes also, as I say, students uh, was the was the best way. Um, so first, I mean, when it comes to a lot of students and a lot of people ask me, oh, but when either when they want to find a new job or when they want to change to a new industry, uh, how I can get a, a new job with uh, no experience in this industry or in, in this field. So uh, first, I recommend to build your own experience, uh, which means uh, by concrete example, uh, tech online courses about this field, um, which is sometimes the easiest way. Uh, then uh, and then you need to try to meet people in this industry. So ask uh, some of your friends at school. Um, I mean, family family members. Maybe contact on LinkedIn. Nowadays there are a lot of online events like webinars about the industry about some industries. There are some offline events that some companies are are running. Um, you can apply for some internship or part time job. Uh, um, outside of, of uh, the, the student time. So try to build your own experience to understand better the industry. Don't just have some assumption and um, and then apply for a full-time job for something you don't know about. So you need to make some research. You need to meet people. You need to uh, learn information online to be able to make your first own idea because sometimes we have some assumption about, oh, I like this industry, I want to do this, but actually the reality is maybe very, very different from uh, what you hear uh, on the newspaper or on, I don't know, on, on uh, YouTube. So you need to, to, to get as much information to avoid wasting sometimes six months, one year in a, in a job or in an industry you, you don't like. Then uh, when you, once you have built your experience, uh, like what I, what I always mention is you need to adapt your resume to the job that you are applying. And uh, I mean, of course, at the beginning of your career, you, your CV is not too long, but you may have different experience. You may have yeah. attended two different courses and you want to highlight different courses and different experience uh, to the job that you are the, that you are looking for. So let's take an example. If you are looking for a job in sales, uh, you may want to write down all 
the small experience that you had uh, in sales uh, previously, even if it's not um, a professional experience, if it's uh, maybe, I don't know, helping your mother to sell uh, fruits on the market or vegetables, maybe it sounds stupid, but it will show a lot, even though you are, it's not a professional experience, it will show a lot how you react, how you handle the customer, uh, etc. So uh, each experience that you have before, you need to adapt it and then uh, be, be creative. Uh, I think uh, when you are entry level, the matter is not like what experience you have, but more the attitude and the motivation. And what we can see the attitude motivation will be with the the extra activities that you have done at school that can be in the club and part time job uh, internship. I mean, even if it's uh, to be honest, like uh, walking in a in a in a supermarket or whatever, I think it's important to have this kind of experience so you can show your motivation and your ability to work in a professional environment. So don't be shy to put all those experience that maybe you can think is minor and uh, is not very uh, outstanding in your CV, but I think it can help uh, recruiters and companies to understand better who you are and then uh, to be more interested in, in, your, in your profile. Uh, next one is uh, networking. So as I mentioned also, like, uh, uh, like, it is very important nowadays to to network and a lot of people blame uh, other or you are lucky you know a lot of people or your your parents know a lot of people so it's easy for you to to get internship but i think in mit you have a very uh, strong um, uh, network you have a alumni program that is, i guess you can help that you can leverage there are thousands of alumni of uh, mit on linkedin that I'm very, I think we'll be very happy to help you and to give you advice. So if the, the network doesn't come to me, you need, you need to go to the, to the network. So uh, I think LinkedIn is a, is a good way to approach uh, for, former alumni. Uh, personally, uh, for me, all my internship and jobs that I got so far was through my uh, alumni or friend from university. So the three internship I got was uh, um, like I contacted former alumni uh, of my uh, company to ask them if they had any internship. And my current job is Robert Walters. He was uh, a friend of my university who was working in Saigon and who referred me to uh, to Robert Walters. So there is no secret and I'm not coming from a, a rich family or whatever whatsoever, but I just uh, just uh, try to, to, to connect with uh, people and, and get the best out of it. And then finally, as I said, uh, I mean, when you don't have uh, much experience, uh, what matters and is the attitude, the motivation that you show, and it will come during the interview. You do, you need to come with a big smile, enthusiast, motivated, uh, have a good uh, preparation about, okay, what is the company? What is the job? <clears throat> Make your homework before you join the interview. So at least you you will show that you are a bit better than other, other, other candidates. So I think it's, uh, and nowadays, as we say, the, there was a lot of new jobs. There is a lot of new industry where most of the people don't know anything about it. So what counts is the, the, the attitude, the adaptability and the motivation for people to, uh, to, to, to learn. Um, so then next topic will be how to write a, a resume. Uh, I mean, I will go briefly uh, one by one, but I think it's quite uh, straightforward. Uh, and as I first, I, as I just, just shared this link your CV with the job description. Um, the second point will be uh, content being designed because a lot of people make a, a very nice CV, but for me it's lacking a lot of information. So um, I don't worry to put too much in your CV. I think uh, as a recruiter or line manager, we are used to read a lot of uh, CVs. So we know where to find the right information and uh, it doesn't need to be uh, uh, outstanding and very colorful. I think it needs to be very straightforward and have the, all the right uh, information uh, in, the, in the CV. So don't be afraid to, to, to as much information as you can, uh, as long as it's relevant. Uh, maybe at your stage, one page CV is enough, but uh, later in your career, uh, don't be afraid to do uh, two pages, three pages. I think for us, it's not a big issue nowadays. We don't print the CVs as long as the information are, are relevant. Uh, don't uh, don't uh, um, worry on that. 
Uh, also, a uh, third one is use bullet points because a lot of people they write like long, long uh, phrases and it's not very convenient for for the recruiter to to read. So use bullet points with very clear information. Don't need to make any phrases, but uh, go go try to, try to go uh, straight to the point. Uh, then <coughs> highlight uh, buzz buzzwords. So uh, buzzwords are the jobs related to. Uh, maybe the JD that you're applying, maybe related to the jobs that you are applying, uh, related to the achievement. Um, try to highlight it uh, on to uh, put it in a in a bigger uh, font uh, to so for the people when they read your CV, they will uh, immediately see those words appearing and focus on, on those words. Um, so the same, uh, the five, fifth point is not too short, not too long. So as I say, uh, if you if you have more information, feel free to do two pages. Uh, don't limit to one page. Uh, and I saw a lot of people doing that, and some scientists they are missing information. Uh, um, and then reflect on your accomplishments. I think uh, a lot of people when they write a CV, they put the the responsibilities that they have done, but m not much about the accomplishment. Uh, and accomplishment is very important to compare and to differentiate yourself from other people because someone else can have done exactly the same job, but may ha may have different accomplishments. So you want also when you when you talk. Uh, when you do the interview to focus on your uh, accomplishment instead of focusing on what you have done uh, because it's how you will uh, differentiate yourself from other people and finally uh, quantify everything uh, i see a lot of cvs also with a lacking of numbers a lacking of i don't know how many clients you met how many uh, calls you did how many customer you had uh, maybe the the name also of the customer. We need to to be able to assess and the volume and the quantity of all those those numbers, and it will uh, help you to also uh, uh, compare yourself with uh, other other candidates. Uh, so that's it for my uh, small uh, presentation. I think uh, we can answer to the question uh, later or now. I don't know what's what's the best. Uh, we will answer the question later. Thanks. So moving on, uh, I will pass on the mic now to Lin to tell us a little bit more about herself and the story. Thanks, Angeline, and uh, thanks, Adrian and Emmanuel for your sharing. Um, so my name is Tuiling. Hello, everyone. And um, currently, I'm a senior consultant in the healthcare team, and uh, I'm also a current MBA student at RMIT. So um, a little bit about my background. Just like Adrian and uh, Manu, I didn't have any background in recruitment or uh, any experience in the healthcare industry before. So um, I did my high school and uh, university in the state. And then um, in 2000, and I, I, I had a bachelor degree in marketing. And then in 2017, I um, came back to Vietnam and I started my first job which was um, a sales role at uh, Fujifilm Vietnam, which is the Japanese company uh, specializing in multinational, uh, multifunctional device and um, office software. So um, I joined Robert Waters in March 2020, and it was the beginning of COVID-19 pandemic in Vietnam. And um, it was the first time we all experienced working from home and um, it was definitely a challenging time for myself and for the company as a whole. Um, but uh, until this, this day, uh, RoboWatch just has provided us with uh, lots of formal training from lessons on basic recruitment to role plays um, together with the support from my team. I was being able to learn and grow myself um, like I never did before, even in such a challenging time. And um, just a little bit on the side, um, even now we have a regular sharing section um, every month and we invited uh, senior leadership uh, people in the across different industry because they are our candidate and client um, and we have it uh, an internal sharing section for all of our employees to um, to kind of learn about different perspective uh, from those people and um, adapt it to ourselves. So um, after taking my first style job at Fujifilm, I took on a recruitment consultant role, um, which was more or less a sales role by 
connecting people who are looking for job with suitable vacancies. So um, at that moment, I could under understand one of my um, colleagues saying, um, I put it at uh, the fulfillment you get from helping people find the right career is incomparable. So um, to me at that moment, it was just whenever the person that you send to a client successfully gets the job, you get a fee. Um, but I was totally wrong. And um, only until a placement happened that I realized the value behind um, of what I'm doing. So um, this is a placement for a healthcare company. Um, after a challenging recruitment process, my candidate managed to get a, the offer with my um, support. And on the very first working date, she wrote me an appreciation letter um, in which she described how meaningful this job is to her and her family um, as they have been living for years with financial burden and the pay rise can really help them to live better. And um, it's not just about the money, the, the products that uh, my candidates in charge are making a huge impact on the society as well. So they provide a solutions for patients with breathing disorders as um, what has happening in Vietnam with the outbreak of COVID-19. Their products are saving lives of thousands of patients. So um, as um, cliche as it may sound, what um, drive me at Robert Waters is um, the power of our purpose in helping people who feel their unique potential and change their lives for the better. So um, can we go to the next slide, please? So that's why um, I try not to put too many words and um, did a little bit of storytelling because um, at Robert Waters, um, I'm the call that changes a life as um, I just share with you about my um, personal experience with my candidate. So um, not only the candidate themselves, we help uh, organizations to fulfill their potential as well as uh, we are specialized in recruiting from uh, middle to senior management level, the people that we bring on board are the factor to achieve the organization goals as well. Because um, their leadership plays a key role in um, you know, inspiring the employees and the team and the company as a whole. So um, it's just like a domino effect. If I can make an impact on my candidate and my client, um, and if I can bring the right people on board, the leadership can help the team, the company, and also, you know, the society as a whole. So um, that is why um, I also put at Robert Waters, I'm building future. I'm building a future by building futures. So um, I hope that my personal experience at uh, Robert Waters uh, can give you a better understanding about what we do as a um, recruiter and uh, the value behind of what we are doing. So it's just not about recruitment. It's not just not about um, sending CV. It's more about um, helping people to find the right job and to fulfill their um, unique potentials. So um, that's this for my sharing. And uh, over to my colleague, me. Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> hi, guys. Can you hear me now? Yeah, sure. Uh, so thanks for having me today. Uh, my name is Mi. Uh, I'm a consultant from Tech and Transformation Recruitment Team at Robert Water Vietnam. So today I would like to share with you guys here a story of myself uh, since graduation and also my career journey at Robert Water. So uh, let's start with a quick reflection and I know that uh, you are soon to be graduating uh, student. Uh, so uh, what is your plan after graduation? Uh, are you considering whether you're going to apply for an internship at a big corporation? Or are you going back working, supporting for your own family business? Or uh, you want to apply for master degree, study abroad like most of your friends have been doing? Um, well, I was that person. 
I don't know sure what should I do. I went to Australia to pursue my uh, master's degree in business management without much working experience. And to be honest, if you don't have that much working experience, study master would be a huge challenge for you. So I graduated, I went back to Vietnam, and again, and again I was struggling a lot in finding a new job. Um, you know, I didn't have many network. I didn't know how many people in the industry. Uh, and I didn't know the tip that Manu already gave you before. So, and also my friend who left, the, left Vietnam uh, and their professional job to pursue MBA, uh, they had the same issue like me. Uh, because, you know, they left for more than two years. So they, they didn't have much information about the labor market, also the job opportunity when they back to Vietnam. Uh, so I agree that I know the Come Home for Good campaign by okay. Robert Water, which is campaign to bring overseas Vietnamese uh, talent back home. So I can stay with my friend back then. So uh, my scene then, I know that um, I want to work in a role where I could support people in landing new jobs. I'm basing about helping people and making a difference in their career and life. So um, I joined Robert Water as a team admin working in the reception area, um, supporting daily business, handling paperwork, welcoming guests, and handling our hotline service. So you might think that there's nothing to learn at the reception. Uh, and you can do more than that uh, because we graduate in a good degree, right? Uh, but you know, it's on the skill set that you can observe and learn from people who you're working with or the people that you work by like every day. So your skill set is ultimately your career capital. Uh, so my message here is don't be afraid to start at the bottom line in an entry level job. Yeah, every, we need to try everything. So I was working closely with the technology team as well as other consultants in our company. People start asking me like, Mioi, uh, would you like to become a recruitment consultant one day? Um, I will have to turn at first questioning myself whether I have a capability for the role. Um, but, you know, I, I did recognize how people here care about my uh, career development. So being surrounded by many super talented, wise and young professional consultants here, their inspiration made me a better version of myself today. So I raised my hand to the management team. And you know what? Surprisingly, my country manager here were the person who advised me, challenged me, and encouraged me to live to my highest potential. So he had a clear picture of where I can grow and how I can get there. Uh, I went through all the process like an external candidate. And finally, I'm here as a consultant today. Uh, <laughs> so um, what is the opportunity for the move to, from the admin team to recruitment consultant? So, you know, internal move can be just rewarding like at, uh, an external one. An internal transfer can help you to achieve your career goal without the hassling of having to skill a new position in different firm, uh, which can by time consuming and emotionally demanding. Because, you know, you already work at the company, you can get way more information about the work at the team than any uh, external job that you interview for or an external candidate applying to the same role as you. So think of the way that you can work with your potential new team so you can get a real feel of the people, of the role, uh, and how you can work together with the team. So uh, by doing that, uh, it will allow you to gain exposure to different areas of business and present the opportunity to fill in professional development gaps uh, and secondly, um, to, become a, uh, to become a consultant, you will become an expert in the chosen sec uh, sector or function. So I'm a tech recruiter, which means I uh, specialize in placing candidates in the most technical, uh, have to fill the role in the technology sector. So it's like software engineer, architecture manager, project or product uh, manager. So you will not only learn about new skills, but also learn about the exciting thing happening in the industry that you only greatly love. 
So my role had allowed me to research and stay up to date with the latest trend in the industry. Uh, I also understand more about hiring and compensation trends. And finally, my time as a recruiter had given me the chance to meet uh, some absolutely incredible people. So you will find yourself grappling people with some of the best raising talent out there, like CEO, CTO, founder, entrepreneur, and talented professional. Um, and also, uh, by taking the risk and the threat, yes, of course. Uh, changing or trying new things is scary at heart, especially because you are not always great at them uh, right away. Uh, so you, you should expect that for for the first few months. Uh, it will be tough uh, to learn new skills and area, uh, but we need to give it our best and trust ourselves. So there's a quote that um, I always remind myself. It's like, she believed she could, uh, so she did. Yeah, um, and there's no growth in your comfort zone. A company, a good company will want to see you grow and success uh, and always encourage you to try new things wherever possible. So that's when you, you know that you find the right fit. And once you accept a new role, committed to it wholeheartedly. And it's the story that um, I want to share with you today. And if you want to thrill in a fast-paced working environment, strengthen your valuable skill set, and importantly, making an impact in people's lives, recruitment recruiting might be the best career option for you. And uh, I mean, if you are interested more in recruitment, uh, I will see you in person again in the uh, Gather uh, Town this Friday. Yeah, uh, and thank um, Yeah, uh, just uh, just all from my side. Over to you, okay. Aisling. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much um, to all the speakers today. It was such a joy to hear about your journey and how far you all have come since your first day with Robert Waters um, business. So, I mean, um, for the students, if what you have heard today resonates with you and you would like to explore more or have a discussion about what is it like to be a recruitment consultant with us, uh, please send your CV to the email address stated on the slide shown and we will definitely be in touch for a discussion. So we are now open the floor for Q&A session, which I can see we have quite, uh, you know, quite a lot of um, questions. So, um, V, did you want to firstly take that or shall I? Aislinn, uh, yeah, thank you so much uh, for your uh, presentation. And I'm also inspired with uh, your own stories from um, your consultants. So we, we received some uh, questions um, from the registration form. It's uh, specific for Robert Quarters. So I would um, read through on the question and uh, maybe um, Robert Quarters teams can support me to answer those. OK, the first question. Do I need to have the HR experience to work at Robot Waters? Okay, I'll try not to lead all of the questions. I see. Um, mm. No, you don't. Um, as I have, as we have all mentioned, we are specialized mm. in different functions. So, for example, in supply chain engineering, we have uh, three engineers. Uh, one. Uh, Qua and now two. Uh, we have uh, historically now we have okay one supply chain purely background. We had accountant also who was recruiting for finance. Um, so no, absolutely mm. no obligation to have HR experience unless you are interested to recruit for HR function. And in that yeah. case, of course, it's mm. always it's always quite relevant as well because you can use your background and your degree. Mm. Uh, to be able to help candidate in HR and clients also want to, to recruit in HR. Um, so it's not a must um, yeah. and it's not necessarily even a preferred background. We, mm. we are open to have different type of, of background and experience. Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, your answer. So for this next one, could you share about the recruitment plan in your company and do you have the training program for the interns? Uh, maybe the question for Anselin. 
or maybe Adrian can continue to answer this. I'm, I'm happy to go for this mm. one and I think because some of the others might be, uh, I think we can start uh, spreading yep. across the room <laughs> a little bit more. Uh, I mean, we grow. Um, obviously, I think 2020 was an interesting exercise for <laughs> for a lot of organizations, including uh, consulting firm and recruitment firm like uh, Robert Walters, where it was a challenge for all organizations to make um, any sort of profit. So 2020 was from a, from a business, I mean, human and human and, and business perspective, a challenge. 2021 for a lot of organizations, including ourselves, was a lot down to consolidation. Uh, it was about, okay, let, let's make the basics right. Let's make sure we can uh, retain all of our uh, all of our great people and and make the operation uh, rolling relatively well. And as a result of this, 2021 was by 30% of record year ever in in the um, in our history of uh, Vietnam performance. Um, and 2022 is expansion. So to reply to the questions, we are growing in term of uh, in term of headcount and in term of uh, and in terms of business as well. And that's the case for, I mean, all of you fresh graduate quite soon. It's the case of 2022. And that's that's a normal picture of Vietnam. A lot of organizations are looking at expanding by 20, 25% or at, at least double digit in terms of uh, in terms of revenue, which usually results in terms of, uh, of, of headcount and recruitment. So um, we have been onboarding about 14 people on the last um, on the last four months. Uh, which, as you can see, for at the scale of uh, 50 plus employees, it's obviously yeah. a big ratio of people who have been onboarded. Do we have any training program for interns? Not specifically for interns. We usually actually do not necessarily, we haven't historically recruited interns. We've never really yeah. done it. Um, is that something we can look into at some point, potentially? Uh, it's just that in terms of our critical size of 50 employees, it's always a little bit difficult for us to embark and to onboard um, interns into um, into different departments. But that's something we can potentially look at. But are we looking at potentially hiring people at maybe more of the entry level of graduation mm -hmm. of maybe having one or two years of our experience? We have done it. Uh, it's not necessarily our business model, but we have done it. And I think that's, that was important for us to have me joining the call and sharing as authentic as possible story, uh, because that was the result of, of, um, of that type of hire as well, to recruit the youngest generation. And lately, we have been hiring people who were born in 1996, <laughs> 7, and, and 1999. Yeah, so mm. we obviously, it doesn't make any me any younger. <laughs> but I think we have to embrace the the, the evolution of, um, of 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 the country, and I think it's a very very young country, and I think we have to to adapt as well. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for your answer. All right. Uh, let's move to the next one. What's the bonus skill that your company is seeking for? Guys, do you want to try that? Manu. Yeah. We have we have our values in Robert Walters, mm. and um, when I think about the values that that will be the bonus skill, it will be maybe uh, being uh, passionate, mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. nowadays, uh, I mean, we all have passion uh, for our hobbies, etc. But uh, when it comes to be passionate about your work, about the people you are working with. And about uh, the the value you're bringing to to the people, I think it's making a, a big difference. So, of course, not everybody can be passionate at the first uh, time when they discover the job. But uh, I think at some points uh, to uh, realize the, your potential and to be uh, be able to uh, deliver and to uh, enjoy the the process, you need to be uh, passionate. So, it's something uh, I think we will. Uh, uh, explore so it's not like a, a box to tick uh, we can really assess the passion of someone for something but i think it's something we can feel and uh, i think it's nowadays quite important yeah thank you thank you all right um the question for i think um already entering uh, already answer in the, the question one as well um yeah you can you can study from the other major to apply for robert waters yeah all right, um, 
The question yeah, and I think five. Also, I mean, I, I, yeah. I think what we're trying to highlight today is not necessarily only about only about Robert Walters. I think we mm. try to be the ambassador of all potential employers because if we're doing such things, it's because the market needs it as well. <laughs> okay, yeah. So mm. I think it's very important to try to put everything we've been saying today, we are saying now in perspective of employability uh, and, mm. and employment potential in Vietnam. Uh, yeah. Because as a consulting HR firm, we also try to lead by example, uh, to try to apply what we believe our clients need to apply, but it's it's also um, everything we've been saying here can be declined in a way and mm -hmm. duplicate into any other type of market um, as a big picture, of course, um, depending of potentially in purely engineering, maybe a bit different. Mm. Um, yeah, that's yeah. right. All right. So will the company offer jobs for fresh graduates lacking working experience? Angeline, do you have regional perspective on this? Mm -hmm. Oh no, if, if no, it's it's no, okay. I think um, typically, yeah, I mean, we do look at people that comes with, you know, at least, you know, two to three years of experience, but of course not discounting, you know, fresh graduate, yeah. you know, we might always find, you know, some diamond um, in the in the raw, um, mm. you know, that you are smart, you know, who, are, who have some part time work experience, that sort of things that we do yeah. take into mm. consideration as well. But typically, yeah, we do hire someone with that two to three years of experience, um, mm -hmm. you know, because it's about the industry professional acknowledged mm -hmm. experience that they have gained in whatever job function they had in before to help to be able to recruit for the positions or the team that they are going to put into. Yeah, and, and to put things in perspective as well, for example, in the, in the Philippines, there is an accelerated program that the, the, the country had put in place in there because they need to fast ramp up the organization. So they are hiring um, quite a lot of fresh graduates at the um, entry level with a customized uh, training, uh, training center and center of excellence being put in place for fresh graduates. It, but but they are a bit younger in the business. They've been five years in the evolution. We've been we've been here for eleven years. We've been I mean we are now over fifty people. So mm -hmm. we're not necessarily in this position where we have to do it. Um, but I know, for example, that I've been talking to a lot of different MNCs and HR professionals who are launching management training. Uh, I see more and more empty program being launched yeah. in Vietnam. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Which is one one thing. But the other one is that what I've heard is that there is a lot of a massive drop rate when it comes to actually <laughs> applying, going to the first interview, going mm. to the second interview, and actually being interested to take on the job. So I think that's back to my story before is if ever you guys are interested to go into management training, just go through the whole process and just show mm. up to the interviews and go to the process and just and try. You have you have nothing to lose. We have got a lot of, of our mm. we have several employees here today who, who has been joining management training program and they are excellent, uh, excellent program for you to touch different function to discover what you want to do. But you need to try. Uh, you yeah. need to try and and you guys are not going to become CEO in two years. Uh, <laughs> you need to you need to build up knowledge through uh, experience and through mistakes and through uh, failures and not only success. And I think mm -hmm. it's very, very important to try to fail because this is just just the best and if not the only way to to learn about yourself and then to have that storyboard uh, being to be able to be built up. You, you, we are not going to become CEO and general managers by watching uh, YouTube videos about mm. Simon Sinek, for example, whatever, I mean, <laughs> influencers you guys may be following in HR, but it's, it's, it takes practice. It takes practice and yeah. that's why uh, sticking to a job, sticking to an organization, having the recognition from the employer to have internal promotion, internal development, changing departments into the company shows that you bring value to the organization as well. So being an, an entrepreneur of your development is, is, is an important um, angle to, to adopt. Yeah, perfect. Makes perfect. Thanks a lot for your valuable advice. So we come to the next question. Have you used any HR management software and what recommendations do you have and what features do you often use? Someone wants to try. I mean, Manu, you take on the line you want to try use. I mean, if you, I mean, I'm, I'm okay. But some, yeah. 
Um, so I will take this uh, question. Yeah. So uh, yes, we uh, we do have different uh, management software, and mm -hmm. um, the company is always trying to create something that can help you to do your job better. Especially at Robert Waters, um, as we work with uh, many candidate and client, um, yeah. the management software that we have is an excellent tool for us to keep track of our activities and. Um, everything and um, it is very smart that it can help you to do the job better and um, you can um, you know kind of keep track of your uh, work and everything. Um, so what recommendations do you have and what features do you often use? So um, for our current uh, management software we would have um, kind of like the database of our candidate and client, and it will help me to shot through different level, um, mm -hmm. like different um, senior level of candidate in different industry. Mm -hmm. And um, the great thing is that I can access to the candidate in the sea as well, like Southeast Asia mm -hmm. as well, not just in Vietnam, to um, kind of have the, the better approach for mm -hmm. the candidate pool. Yeah, and um, so I'm not sure if about the what recommendations do you have part uh, for this question? Yeah, um, I'm not sure. Let me see. Is he... Yeah, I think uh, that question come from V Farm. Um, the student attend the uh, session today. V, mm. do you want to unmute yourself and share a bit um, what you want to ask? Oh, 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 hi. Yeah. Did you hear me well? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Anne. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm already clear about that HR management software because because uh, before I ask this question, I think that um, you should. Uh, so recommendations like um. Just like us, uh, recommendations about some features that often used in that technique or something related to HR management software. So uh, after you explain it, I have all clear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, V. Yeah. Thank you, Lin. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so we uh, move to the next one. I think that's that's the one uh, for Emmanuel. Uh, with reference to your speech about uh, quantify everything, uh, would you be uh, would it be more um, strategically to include on the schools and courses if I study for two schools? Plus, is it okay to include some internships even though they were only for one or two months? Over to you. Yes, thank you for your for your question. Mm -hmm. So I think um, yes, you need to include the two schools that you you work for, you studied for, because uh, you need to see, especially if you did in several countries or different major. I think it's always interesting to put. When it comes to courses, I don't think you should detail all the courses. But what I shared is you need to if you apply for one job, then you need to. I would say list down the courses that are the most relevant to this job and the ones which are not relevant, uh, maybe you can uh, not not put it. So it's just making the right choices. So maybe I can recommend you if you have a, uh, if you apply for different jobs and you have follow many courses, you can do a, a one CV with everything. And then mm -hmm. whenever you apply for one job, you can uh, remove the information that are maybe not relevant also to make it uh, more uh, e for make it easier for the for the recruiter to to read the the, the CV. Yeah. So for the first question and then for the second one the mm. same. I think uh, recently I talked to a candidate who was applying for an e-commerce job and uh, and then uh, there was nothing mentioned about e-commerce in uh, a CV and then mm. uh, when I talked to her she said oh yeah but I had some family business related to e-commerce. Mm. I say OK, sorry, but if you apply for e-commerce job, even if it's a family, family business or if it's an internship, it's worth maybe more than maybe the other job that you have done that are not at all relevant to e-commerce. So yeah, if 
uh, it's relevant to the job that you apply, you should put the internship even if it's one month, two mm -hmm. months, because it will put uh, it will give an advantage. But if it's not relevant to the to the job or the industry that you are applying, no. So you don't, you don't need to to put it. So it's I think it's a common sense. But uh, even though the, the experience is quite short, feel free to put it if it's uh, relevant. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's the end um, for the question for um, in the slide. But we still have some more in the check box as well. So I will read through. All right. Um, so I have one question from Quang Wing. How Im important is the GBI in the CV screening ground? I think that's a quite common question uh, from our students. Yeah. Do you guys look at it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Lin. Okay. Yeah, I think reply. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, the next question um, from G. What skills are important for candidates to successfully get a promotion in your corporation? Which the will the company offer jobs for fresh graduates lacking working experience? I think uh, you you guys already answered the second question. So maybe just um, answer the first one. What skills are important for candidates to successfully get a position uh, at I mean, your are, organization? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we are a consulting firm in mm. HR doing sales. Okay. Yeah. So I think if ever you frame that that way, then as a result, we need to have good communication skills, good presentation mm. skills. Uh, we need to have, it means that if you're good at presenting and communicating because you have a good relevant background as well. So of course mm. you need to be able to link, uh, link these both. You need to be able to have to be self-organized because mm. as a consultant, you have, uh, you have a lot of information coming from internal, internal requests uh, from your colleagues, from your management, from your, from your boss, from the region, but also from your candidate and your clients. Obviously, uh, our job is to help our candidates to get a good job and to, uh, to help our clients to get good candidates. So it's important to prioritize that. So being being able to be organized is uh, is is very important. Being able to have a bit of a sort of a drive and very good resilience yeah. is very important as well. Uh, whenever you do consultancy and sales as, as, at the same time, it's a bit of a losing game in a way uh, because mm. we lose more than we win. We have to call X clients to get uh, to get Y meeting. We need to get Y mm. meeting to get Z uh, jobs and etc. So it's always smaller and smaller and smaller. The more you go down to the to the to the chain of a, of a recruitment life cycle uh, process. So um, keeping the drive, being resilient, being optimistic um, mm. on the long run. And we don't talk necessarily about two months and probation time, but we talk about years. So it needs to be someone you really enjoy and down to what mm. Manu was saying, passion. finding <laughs> some passion in what yeah. you do is very important because mm. and putting things in perspective on the long run will automatically mm. help handling difficulties and objections. Because if you think about a job on the long run, then it's just part of the process. It's just part of the development. It's part of the adventure. It's normal. And you suddenly become very result oriented and very solution oriented and we talk a lot about that uh, growth mindset concept mm -hmm. which yeah. for me is very important um, always looking at uh, the glass half full and not half empty always being uh, mm. uh, resourceful when it comes to solution um, it might not be the right solution but at least we need to bring to have the accountability to bring those mm. solutions Thank, thank you so much for your detailed answer. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we will come to the next one from V. What do you think about a second year student find a company to do the internship? Um, because I was uh, redundant that uh, when someone told me that I do not have enough experience and knowledge about a company operation, so I will get many rejections. Well, that the yeah, that's the chicken and the egg problem, mm -hmm. right? I mean, <laughs> where do you need to start? Mm -hmm. um, I think me highlighted that relatively well before. Mm -hmm. I think you need to start somewhere, and I think it was really well highlighted by Lynn and Manu as well on saying whatever experience you have, get the best out of it, make a good story, uh, learn something, being able to articulate uh, articulate those learnings to be able to leverage them in the future. So, if a company says no now, it does. Just, just move on. 
Uh, you have plenty of other options in the, um, uh, plenty of other options in, uh, in in Vietnam and in Ho Chi Minh. So try somewhere else. It means they don't deserve you. And then mm. <laughs> try try and knock knock another door. It's fine. You, you'll you'll get something. Yeah. And I don't know uh, if anyone wants to add anything. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me move to the question from you. Uh, does the company have a specific framework for job promotion? Because I see that you mentioned that 90% of the senior managers come from consultants. If so, I would like to know the company to be able to share a bit of this framework. Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. And um, I think in Southeast Asia, we were one of the early adopters to put things very transparently. Uh, mm. to create a, a safety net, I think, for employees, for employees to know that we're looking after them because sometimes from a management perspective, we all, of course, my top priority is making sure that my colleagues, my peers, my it's not my employees, but my collaborators are, mm. are happy working together. And I'm I'm seeing myself as someone who are, who is more working for them than then working for me. <laughs> I think it's uh, <laughs> my job is to make their life easier, not necessarily yeah. the other way around. So yes, we have a very specific framework from consultant to senior con, from senior con to principal, from senior con to management. If there is more interest for someone to get more details, okay, we can talk about it, but it's obviously mm -hmm. a mix of measurable elements where we talk about uh, key, key performance indicators, so KPIs, which are a mix of mm -hmm. different elements we're looking at, and non-measurable elements, which are more soft skills. Um, Emmanuel was talking about the values, so we have five mm -hmm. values, uh, teamwork, integrity, passion, innovation, quality. Each value has two um, behavior for success. So we want those 10 behaviors to be respected as much as possible as well. So we just create a bit of a frame for people yeah. to, to know what is expected from the organization from measurable and non-measurable elements. So um, this is in place for some time now. And the more we grow and the more we're being, I'm being challenged to, to know whether we need to frame such things or a little bit not. But um, I think it's important to give, uh, to leave room for um, gray area. I think it's mm. a bit of a trap and I understand whenever we're young and fresh graduate, we want everything to be crystal clear and to be black and white. <laughs> An organization cannot do that. Mm. I mean, by definition, we cannot have everything super clear because if it's all black and white, then we we close doors of flexibility. Mm -mm. And I think, it's, yeah. I think it's a bit dangerous. Yeah. So I purposely want to give room for mm. Other alternatives. I think it's important because not every every story will be the same. Yeah, thank you so much. And yeah, just just on that mm. to add on. I mean, to 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 Adrian's point. Yeah, we have specific framework and KPIs, which means that we do not promote. Uh, we promote based on performance and um, you know bonuses and um, merits as well. So not just based on longevity in terms of how long they've been with the business. So then as you can see, Adrian has been with the business for only four years before he was promoted into a country manager role. So that's again a testament in terms of how fast your career can accelerate in Robert Waters if you demonstrate the right values, you know, produce results and perform well in your job as well. Thank you, Angeline. Yeah, so we move to the next one. I see that you have a lot of questions today. Um, we have a question from Fu. How can I find as much at internship opportunities? Uh, the, the more you apply, the more you get. Uh, sorry, you are on mute, Andrew. Uh, go go yeah. ahead, Mila. Yeah. So um, mm, as you can see, it's time to answer this question. So uh, how you can find as not at uh, internship, right? Just yeah. you, I think like you, the connection around you. Uh, for example, if you studying at uh, MIT, at your mentor or like student who study with you. I mean, like for example, when I was in university in uh, Australia, uh, one of my friends who were like, they, they did it in um, exchange uh, program from Europe to Sydney. So um, they just spend there for six months. Uh, so they ask uh, our professor, uh, our tutor, to recommend their, uh, an internship job. So my, my answer here is like use the quick network around you. Uh, student, your friend, uh, your mentor, your, and also LinkedIn. 
because you know that a lot of opportunities there. But you need to read, uh, I mean, like to know more, uh, to know, uh, clearly know about the requirements so you can mm. uh, get that chance. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, me. Yeah, I want to add more that uh, at MIT, we do have the job board called Career Hub. So that's the place that you can find on kind of internship opportunity as well. And also for our um, light recruitment uh, quick, we also have uh, many opportunity internship and fresh program for our students. Yes, you can attend and uh, look for that. All right, and so I move to the next one. And the second question from you, does the company have many opportunity to work in branches approach? If yes, does the company offer employee support and benefits that vary according to the foreign branch? That's such a nice question. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah. Uh, and I hope that we will be seeing more Vietnamese going mm. abroad. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's such a talented uh, community here that um, um, actually, we have two former accountants uh, mm. who are now working, one in Singapore, one in Japan. We have one former employee uh, from Canada who's working in Tokyo as well. We had one employee, Vietnamese employee, who tried going to um, our Tokyo office and it's unfortunately was not this year's success. It's um, honestly it's very 50-50. Uh, mm -hmm. the level of success because it's it, it is challenging to adapt to a new country to a new culture uh, it wasn't that easy for me it's it's already not very easy for Vietnamese to adapt to different mm -hmm. cultures from different corporate cultures so imagine if you have to adapt to uh, to to others so it needs to be well thought I think it needs to be well yeah. prepared as well uh, but yes we do we definitely yeah. Uh, moving people uh, people across. So our country manager in uh, in Singapore, for example, work in our Shanghai office, in our Manila office as well. Um, our country manager for Indonesia worked in Paris, in Thailand, in Philippines as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we have someone in the office here today who worked last year in Thailand for one year and came back after. So we do. We do definitely use our international uh, network and uh, we always, um, every quarter, we have a discussion with the HR department Department to explore mobility interests for all employees. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> so the student have the last one. <laughs> Does the company organize many bonding events uh, between the employees or divisions? I will ask the employees to reply then. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a real example. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for so for Robert Walter, so mm -hmm. I think like one of the most things that I enjoy working here is like the environment and uh, college also the, how the community care about you, not only about financially, but also mentally. Um, so at Robert Walter, we normally at, uh, we, uh, on first week of the year uh, of the month, we have office day, so we uh, do some internal activity. Uh, we have bring and also we have uh, uh, at every week we have running uh, section at badminton. Mm. Yeah, and do, for example, like during the, the lockdown, we also do some cardio section and yoga uh, that we really enjoy. Uh, yeah, that's one of the way that the company trying to connect people. Uh, it's like it's not only we, we work together, but also how we care about mental health. Uh, yeah, mm. so um, at Robert Water, I mean, like, uh, we, we are not a really big operation. Uh, we know everyone here across the function, uh, and we work very close to each other. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for me. All right, um, I think that uh, will be the last question. Uh, how does Robert Waters measure KPI, for example, consultants? And does Robert Water has any support for employee yeah, really? having unsatisfactory performance? Yeah. Um, okay, so um, at Robot Waters, we have, mm. again, a very clear KBI measurement mm. uh, yeah. where we, every consultant can assess and we can see our KBI weekly and monthly, mm. quarterly, and even yearly. So um, it's a very um, smart system for us to mm. track. And um, for myself, I keep track of my performance and my activities using that um, KBI. Um, I think myself, um, I was, I, I shared that I had a very rough um, start with Robert Waters in 2020. Mm -hmm. 
And um, I remember I, I told my parents that if um, there's one person that the company need to fire is me. So <laughs> I remember I, I, I coming home telling my parents <laughs> that because I, I, I didn't know what was going mm. on and I was new to the industry and um, we, we faced a very rough year for, for recruitment in 2020. So, um, but again, uh, resilient and the people that you work with and the support and encour encouragement from my managers, um, from Adrian and uh, my colleague is what uh, keep me going. And um, they definitely KBI is very important that uh, to make sure that we do what we do to um, keep track of our activities. But um, beside that, the uh, attitude and you know the resilience that you show in the job, um, you show that you try and um, you may fail, but then you get up, then um, your managers, your team, and um, your country manager will be there to support you to go through that, um, you know, difficult period of time. So um, I hope that my answer can be, can clarify your question. Yeah, I think it is, yeah. Um, because uh, the students uh, said that, um, I'm not sure that he or she, but uh, the student asked a lot, but because uh, the student just graduated um, recently and repair for to apply for the job. So the student want to know a bit more about the inside view from your company uh, and um, they send the thank you to you guys for sharing such a uh, very detailed sharing. Yeah. I think that's um that's all for the question uh, for you guys, and yeah we come to the uh, closing. Yeah, thank you so much for your team um for uh, the time and also the detail sharing today. And I hope that um, our student will get a lot of advice from you guys to better repair for their future. Yeah, before we closing, uh, I would like to ask all the students to open the camera so we uh, can take the picture together. Everyone, don't be shy to open your camera and take a picture with Robert Water Teams. <laughs>